Hey, so since we're about halfway through the year, I want to do a check-in with you. I'm sure that many of you set goals for your English at the beginning of the year, or I hope that you set some goals for yourself, and hopefully you're on track with those goals. But if you aren't, I want to remind you that that's okay, there is still time. And today I want to talk about some of the things that might be holding you back or stopping you from reaching those goals. In particular, we're going to talk about eight things that might be holding you back from where you want to be. And understanding these things is going to help you obviously stop doing them so that you can reach your English goals. Let's go. So first of all, if you're not quite where you want to be with your English, one common reason is that you might be doing the same thing over and over, but expecting a different outcome. A lot of adult learners have a tendency to stick to what we know and just do what is comfortable and to do what we've always done essentially, whether it's helping us or not. And a lot of adult learners learned one traditional specific way in school. You studied from a book, you memorized grammar, maybe you did some writing, you did some tests and so on. And while this method does work for some people, it doesn't work for everyone because not everyone learns the same way. And it's very important to keep that in mind. So if you have been using the same methods, the same techniques, the same approach, the same materials, the same content, but you've kind of plateaued toad or stayed at one level with your English, this means that you need to change what you're doing. I always say that consistency is key and it is, but you cannot consistently do something that is not working for you and then expect to see a result. Okay. So this is one thing for you to keep in mind, whatever methods or approaches you are using, take a look at them and ask yourself, are these things actually working for me? Or do I me do I maybe need to make a change, right? Because you don't want to waste your time. You want to make the most of the time that you spend trying to improve your English. So let's say that you are dedicated, you're consistent, you devote maybe one hour every single day to your English but you're not really feeling like you're improving, you're not really seeing results, that could mean that you are doing the same thing over and over, something that's not working, and then you're expecting a different result, okay? So the point here is don't be afraid to try new approaches, new methods, even if they're a little intimidating or they make you a little nervous, that's okay, because learning happens outside of our comfort zone. Another common reason why many of us don't reach our goals is because we are too hard on ourselves. If you're too hard on yourself, this means that you get really upset with yourself when you fail at something or you don't do well with something or you're not exactly where you want to be or something doesn't go as you hoped. So for example, let's say that you had an English exam, maybe the IELTS exam, and your score obviously wasn't what you wanted or wasn't what you were aiming for. A lot of people can be really hard on themselves. They can beat themselves up and they can feel like, okay, my English is just not good enough and therefore I am not good enough for whatever I'm trying to do, whether it's going to university or moving abroad or getting a job or whatever the case may be. But just because you don't succeed the first time you try something, it absolutely does not mean that you're not good enough or that you can't do it. It might mean different things. Maybe you need more time. Maybe you need more preparation. Maybe you need a different method. There are lots of reasons why we don't succeed the first time that we try things. And that is okay. It's also part of the learning process. And when we are hard on ourselves and we beat ourselves up, what we're doing is repeating the same negative thoughts and sentences over and over and over in our mind. And unfortunately, we're making those things reality. So if you are telling yourself, okay, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. This is too difficult. Whether you're saying that out loud to other people or you're saying it internally to yourself, if you keep repeating it, eventually it will become true. 
okay? So the point here is that you do not need to be so hard on yourself if you don't succeed with something the first time or the second time or even the third time. If you have a job interview in English and it's not successful, if you don't pass an exam, if you fumble in a conversation, whatever the case may be, it just means that you need to change your approach and maybe adjust your timeline, okay? But instead, what you do need to focus on are the small successes and the smaller wins and accomplishments that you have when it comes to your English. So for example, let's say that you are able to participate in a difficult debate or a difficult discussion. That is a success. Let's say that you were not able to make phone calls in English and you've improved in this area. That is a win. That is a success. Let's say that you had absolutely no confidence when it came to talking to new people in English, but now you're able to do that. All of these things are accomplishments and it's a really important part of the learning process to be able to recognize when you do something well and to celebrate that. Another thing that might be holding you back with your English is doing things that are too easy or too difficult for you. Instead, you want to aim to find content and material that's a little bit challenging for you, okay? Not to the point where you don't understand anything and you get frustrated and you're like, what is this even about? I don't get it. If it's too difficult, it will become frustrating and you're more likely to just give up and stop. If it's too easy, you're going to feel like, okay, I understand everything, this is great, but it's not an effective use of your time. If you're doing something that is too easy for you, unfortunately, you're not learning anything new. So instead, you want to try to get that sweet spot in the middle. And if you're not sure what your English level is, you might want to take an assessment to help you understand that or speak to a teacher to help you understand what your level is and aim a little bit higher than that. Now, another big thing and very common thing that might be holding you back is you're inconsistent. I've said it before and I'll say it again, consistency is absolutely key. Of course, we go through periods where we're more motivated and periods when we're less motivated. It's normal, it's natural. However, a part of improving anything, including your English, is that you must be consistent. So if you go through phases where one week you're super motivated, you're excited and you're, you're studying and you're practicing, and then three weeks passes and you're busy or you forget or you make excuses or whatever the case is, this is not helping you, this is hurting you, okay? So it's better to devote smaller chunks of time to your English, but to stay consistent, than to just dive in head first and be really into it for a short time and then stop for a long time and start and stop and start and stop, okay? So try to avoid that. Instead, find a way to be consistent. You need to work English into your everyday routine in a manageable way. So this could look as simple as setting aside 20 minutes every day to read something in English, okay? You don't have to go crazy with it, but you do have to be consistent. Now, this one is very, very common, especially among adult English learners. You're not practicing. You might be learning a lot of great, useful content, vocabulary, techniques, whatever the case is, but if you do not put those things into practice, you will forget them, okay? When you hear something or learn something for the first time, you absolutely must put it into practice in order to solidify or remember that information. Otherwise, it's gonna be in one ear and out the other ear, and it's a waste of time, okay? So if you are studying English proactively, make sure that you set aside time always to review, to go back to what you have learned, to read your notes again, to watch a video again, to listen to something again, okay? and put it into practice. Now, something else to be very careful with is consuming too much content in your own language, in your native language. Now, what does it mean to consume content? To consume content means to read, to watch, or to listen to any kind of content. So this could be social media, this could be the news, this could be articles, this could be blogs. If you are consuming or taking in too much content in your own language, you are reducing or lowering 
the exposure time that you have to English, okay? There's a very simple fix for this. So if you are someone who spends a lot of time online, maybe on social media, reading the news, whatever, simply switch those things over to English and try to consume the same content in English, okay? So if you read the news every day in your language, read it in English. If you scroll through social media, whatever platforms you use, change the settings to English, translate the captions to English. So this is a really simple step because it doesn't take you any more time or any more effort. You're simply making a little change so that you can take in less content in your own language because the more exposure you have to the language, the faster you will improve. The next thing that might be holding you back is worrying too much about other people. Now, this could be worrying about what other people think of your English, if other people are judging you, other people's English level, and so on, okay? It's natural to worry about what other people think of us. It's a natural, normal, common thing. But sometimes we put too much weight into other people's opinion. We put too much importance into other people's opinion. And this holds us back from what we're trying to do because we're too busy worrying about all the people around us instead of just focusing on what we are trying to accomplish. And sometimes if you feel like other people are not going to understand you, it's common to just not say anything. If you feel like other people's English level is higher than yours, it's common to not speak, right? I've seen this many times with many of my students. So if this is something that you've been doing, don't feel bad. Again, like everything else that we're talking about today, there's always a fix, there's always a solution, okay? Instead, you need to learn to shift your focus back on to what you are trying to accomplish. You also need to surround yourself with people who are supportive and make the effort to understand you. And another thing is to realize that people are not judging us as harshly as we are judging ourselves. And this is something that I have had to learn firsthand. So even though you might walk around thinking, okay, people are probably judging my English and thinking my English is so bad. Honestly, people are generally trying to understand what you're saying and understand your message. Of course, there are some people who are unpleasant, who are difficult, who are rude, but that is not a majority of people. That is the minority. And do not let this negative minority get to you. Instead, stay focused, take little steps, and understand that people are not judging you the way that you are judging yourself. And stop worrying so much about what other people think of your English. Instead, just focus on the next step that you have to take. And finally, a big mistake is not connecting the things that you are learning. So this means that you're learning bits and pieces in isolation, okay? Remember that to learn any language, including English, there are lots of different parts that fit together and work together. For example, you have vocabulary, you have grammar, you have speaking, reading, writing, listening, pronunciation, comprehension. There's so many parts that fit together to improve your overall English knowledge. So if you're someone who has been studying grammar and your knowledge of grammar is improving, but you haven't been putting that grammar into practice and connecting it to your speech or connecting it to your writing, you're just learning one little part in isolation. And this is also very common. A lot of people tend to read things in English or watch or listen to things in English and then they stop there. They stop there. So they are consuming content, they have input, but they don't have any output. They're not doing anything or creating anything with what they have learned. So it's extremely important to connect the different parts of English, the different skills in English, and actually do something with what you are learning. Make sure that you're not ignoring your output, okay? So for example, when you read something, Pay attention to how grammar is being used. Pay attention to how vocabulary and expressions and idioms are being used. And if you do this, you have connected three things, reading, vocabulary, and grammar. If you listen to something, pay attention to the pronunciation and the flow and intonation of the speech. Here, you've connected two things, 
listening and pronunciation. So always keep this in the back of your mind. Whenever you practice anything in English, you are practicing more than one thing or you can practice more than one thing. So try your best to connect the different parts of English and look at the language in a more comprehensive or complete or whole way. So there you have it. These are some things to keep in mind if you feel like you haven't quite reached your goals or you're not quite where you wanna be, some of these things might be holding you back, but there are simple solutions to all of them, all right? Now, don't forget to grab your free ebook, English Conversations Made Simple, that is linked down below this lesson. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe. This really helps the channel to grow and it helps me to reach English learners all around the world. Thank you so much for watching, learning, and spending time here with me today. I'll see you very soon in another one.